Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to another episode in which we talk about multiplayer networking in Unity. So um, throughout the weeks, we released a small series in which we were making some, some mechanics for multiplayer game. And I've got a question, and that question was, how do we put that out there? How do we let people connect to us and actually play with us? So I'm here to show you just that today. Now, the game that you're going to see here and the game that we've been, well, not really a game, but the thing we have did during the, the five episode series is much different and that we can address tomorrow. I'll be going over the changes tomorrow, but for today, I'm just going to show you how to put it online, which is the same thing if you only did the five, five video thing or if you have a more much more complex system. So here with me, I have my computer, I have my router next to me. Everything here is on the same network at the moment and I also have a laptop in which I'm going to be um, I'm going to be passing the build over to my laptop to do some tests. So we're going to do a total of two tests here. We're going to be um, hosting it on my computer and then I'm going to be connecting to my game through the laptop and that's going to be on LAN. And then after that, I'll take my, um, my laptop off the local network here and I'll put it on my phone hotspot and I'll connect once again to this computer. All right. I think we're pretty much, uh, we're ready. Let's get started. So this is what I have right here. I have a preloader screen that has a, um, a script on it called preloader. And what happened is very, very simple. If we click on client, we create a new client prefab. If we click on server, we create a new server prefab. And if we click on boat, it calls boat function and then send us over to the lobby scene. So it's fairly simple. Here is the client prefab. It's an object that has my exile client script on it, which is just um, exile client is the same client we've made during the five episode tutorial, but it's extended. So if you see here, we used to have the base client. This is what matters. The rest is just logic for my custom game, which we'll go, we'll go over tomorrow. Um, okay. So it is very important for us to know what is the IP we're connecting to and also what is the port during the Siri. I believe we, we actually put it hard coded inside of the code roughly here, but here instead, um, I give it two values. So these two variable at the top and I do network endpoint dot parse in which we parse for the IP address and of course the port. It's going to be very important that we remember which port we're on. So here that's 8,000 and the address we're connecting right now is localhost or loopback address. It's the same thing. Okay. So with that said, you now understand the flow. If I start the game here and I click on server, it's going to boot a client prefab and also a server prefab, which is kind of exactly what we had in the five, um, five episode series. Okay. Um, then you can of course enter the world and you can move around that will go over tomorrow. So we just went through the changes, nothing too big, nothing that should affect what you currently have. Um, our first step is going to be to, to actually connect to LAN. Now to connect to your LAN, you need to know which is your address within your LAN. Um, my computer right here is going to be the one hosting. So I need to know what is the address of that computer within my local network. So within my home, basically the way you can do that is by going over to any command prompt and uh, type in IP config and then look for the IPv4 address. So this one roughly over here, you have the gateway gateway is where your router is. So if you, if you go in your browser and you enter this address right here, you're going to be entering your router, assuming it has an interface, but now within that your router is number one, usually, but within that you have other devices such as your cell phone, your laptop, other computers, they're all connecting through, well, they all have a address and that address is going to be this one in my case. So, um, one eighty two, one sixty eight, zero, and then. So the IPv4 address is not something you give out to the people from outside your local home. So if you, if you need somebody else, um, from a different router or from a different internet provider to connect to you, then you don't give him that address. That address is just for you within the local network. And if you'd like, for example, to block your Wi-Fi or block your sister's access to the Wi-Fi, you get to identify, which is her phone basically, and you can go in the router setting and just block out that address. Um, but in this case, let's just find out what is our address. So on my hosting computer, it's, it ends with dot 10. So the number 10 right here, what I'm going to do next is find my client prefab in which I have my script and I'm going to input the address that I saw. So 192.168.0.10. I'm going to keep it on port 8,000 and I'm going to create a build so I can send that over to my other computer. All right, so it finished uploading on my computer there. And now I've downloaded it on my laptop and my build should be right here. 
And uh, of course we have to first boot it on this machine. So going back, actually going back on my computer real quick, I'm going to go press on start, hit server and client. And then um, here I have my net welcome for my own person. And if I go back to my laptop real quick and I run the build, okay, so yeah, I'm going to run this anyway. And I'm just going to connect as a client. And we'll see here that I receive a new connection. So accepted the connection, server one, net welcome. Just to make sure, let's go inside of the game, click enter world on both of them. And let's try to move around. So this is me on this screen and here I am on the other screen. The blue square here indicates the other player. If, if you see the, the sphere disappear, it's simply because I am too far away and after a certain time, after a certain radius, I should say, then things disappear. It's way too short right now, but of course I was just testing it out. Now that's it for the LAN, so local area networks, which is everything inside of your home, everything that is connected to the same router, you could say. And now we're gonna go into connecting from outside, which brings in two additional steps. One of them is to uh, forward your port on your router. So your router is going, you're gonna go on your router and you're gonna make sure you open up some port for the game, in this case, 8,000. And what was the second step already? I think that's it. Yeah, of course, we're gonna need to change the address because now we're no longer connecting to a local area network address, but we're connecting to uh, the external IP, you could say. So we're gonna need to change that and we're gonna need to make sure we forward our port. Now to find your external IP, you can head over to any website that does it. So what is my IP works, IP chicken also works. And you're going to find out you have an IP here that is the public IPv4 or public IPv6. Um, what you're going to do is copy that address over, create a build the same exact way as we've done it before. So I've changed here my IP address to my external IP. And I'm going to, of course, create another build, which is really not efficient. I should have just <laughs> a input field in there that takes care of that, but uh, I'm not really prepared, huh? Okay, so I downloaded my build with the hard-coded IP, hard-coded external IP. Now I'm gonna go on, under my computer and I am quickly gonna change the exile client to have the local address so I can connect to myself, basically. And I'm gonna make sure to start a game. So I wanna start a game with player, uh, actually the, the, the server and also the client. I'm going to hit enter world and just to make sure that everything seems to work when I enter on the other one, I'm going to change the sphere for a, for example, another model, so a cube and also a different material. So a red cube. And now I'm going to head over to this computer here and I want to show you that I am on the, on a different network. So I have multiplayer tests, which is the exact same as my, um, my hotspot. So this is my hotspot, multiplayer test. And we're going to try to connect. And also note that if this was my, my LAN, my local arena network, I would not be able to connect with this build to that one simply because you cannot connect for some reason, you cannot connect to, um, to someone that is already within your network with its external IP. You have to actually use the internal IP in this case. So here we go. I have this thing here. I'm trying to show you. I'll click on client. I am seeing it pop up here, enter world, and we should see a red square, cube, cube. That's what I meant. And next to it is the other player, which I'm going to move. Oop, there we go. And as you can see, I'm moving on my computer and I'm getting this result over here. So the connection was established. Everything seems to be working just fine. And uh, that's it. <laughs> I hope you learned something. And um, do note that tomorrow we're going to be looking, or tomorrow or the day after, I'm not quite sure yet, but we're going to be looking into the code I currently have um, because it changed quite a bit since the last time. I have a couple of new techniques I'm using. I'm using a um, event-based system for firing message, which I think is a lot more efficient. And I also like to share the actor system. It's something that uh, is kind of derived from um, World of Warcraft, you could say to some extent, because I used to debug the game quite a lot back then. Uh, through reverse engineering and they have something called a object manager which would deal with all the net object in your scene so that's only game object that's not things like uh, the floor that's not things like the trees it's only thing you could interact with for example plants for gathering other player uh, mobs and pcs things like that 
Um, I have a system like that behind my game right now, and that's the object that you saw. So the the blue orb at the beginning, that's a object. Uh, the other playing joining, that's another object. I'd like to share that with you for the sole purpose that I'm. I think it's quite cool, and um, yeah, and I'll be doing that in the next video. So tune in. Make sure you subscribe. Very important. You subscribe, and um, I wanted to make a game, so I'm, I'm headed towards making a survival game, and I'm going to be taking you guys along with me because why not? Yeah. That's it. So subscribe, leave a like, and uh, thank you. Thank you for watching. Cheers.